Now, former U.S. President Donald Trump has requested the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn the Colorado State Supreme Court's ruling that removed him from the state's 2024 ballot under the 14th Amendment's insurrectionist clause. Now, the Supreme Court is facing mounting pressure to decide whether Donald Trump can be disqualified from holding public office or not. With us on the broadcast is my colleague Brian Anthony Thomas. Brian, over to you for more details on this. Well, here in the filing, uh, Trump's attorney, you know, wrote that in the legal system of government of the people, by the people and for the people, Colorado's ruling is not um, and cannot be corrected. And even the Supreme Court is now facing mounting pressure to decide whether Trump, the front runner of the, for the uh, GOG, GOP presidential nominate, uh, nomination, can be disqualified from holding public office. And meanwhile, even the High Court is, you know, involved in other matters that could affect the federal criminal case against Trump. And um, even the latest that we're getting to know, also the former U.S. president's appeal comes nearly a week after the Colorado GOP, which is also a party in the case filed in a, a separate appeal. And two weeks later, also the Colorado ruling came down. Um, the ruling has also been put on hold while appeals play out and Colorado's top election officials has already made clear that Trump's name will be included on the state's uh, primary ballot when it is certified uh, on, on January 6th. And his appeal also comes nearly a week after Colorado GOP, which is also a party in the case, filed a separate appeal and two weeks after the Colorado ruling came down. And um, the ruling has also been put hold while appeals play out and Colorado's top election official has also made um, already made clear that Trump's name will be included on the state um, uh, primary ballot when it's certified on January 5th, unless the U.S. Supreme Court gives its ruling otherwise. And his Trump's legal team has also stressed that the question of eligibility for the presidency also should be determined by Congress and not the states, and that the Colorado Supreme Court ruled that an insurrection occurred on January 2nd, 2021, and that the former U.S. president engaged in the insurrection. Yes, Pia. All right, Brian, I'd like to thank you for joining us on the broadcast. But also with us is uh, Mr. Sanjeev Srivastav, international affairs expert. Uh, now, sir, we've discussed this earlier too. It was a very close decision that was made by uh, the Colorado court, a 4-3 decision, in fact. And after this, uh, Trump had come out and he had slammed the Democrats. He had, in fact, also called out uh, George Soros at that point of time. He had stated that the Democrats know they can't beat us at the ballot box, so their new plan is to nullify every Trump ballot and uh, right now uh, just uh, three hours earlier uh, morning consult has stated that Trump is leading uh, against his other Republican primary candidates uh, he is he has about a 66 percent um, sort of approval rating and as well as a 42 percent approval rating when compared to Joe Biden who is the current president of the United States of America so uh, what do you make of uh, Trump's move now to move to the U.S. Supreme Court well I think, I think uh, 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 at this point of time, uh, 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 former President Donald Trump uh, is a clear uh, front runner, and uh, uh, in the Republican Party's nomination. Uh, and uh, at this point of time, uh, uh, he has requested the uh, Supreme Court of the United States of America also to return this uh, Colorado uh, uh, court uh, verdict. And uh, certainly, uh, he is going to fight it on. And every time uh, such uh, uh, verdicts come. Every time such rulings come against him or any kind of uh, indictments uh, uh, which come up uh, against him, uh, he protects uh, entire you know this kind of uh, you know uh, situations as uh, as uh, uh, as, if, as if he is being victimized, and that's what precisely has been saying to his voters that uh, he is uh, uh, being targeted and uh, as a political witch hunt, and uh, he is going to be fighting it on. So what we have seen here is that uh, every time uh, such a uh, verdict uh, and such kind of uh, uh, situation arise in his uh, political career, he portrays it and uh, gets uh, sympathy uh, from his supporters. And, uh, and a number of uh, uh, the, 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 so the amount of funding goes up, the people um, uh, gets more uh, solidified in favor of him. And that is why in various polls he is uh, leading. And, uh, and I'm sure that uh, uh, he's going to be uh, the uh, very, very uh, potential 
uh, formidable uh, candidate for President Biden in, our, in, in times ahead and when the uh, election comes up. And certainly within the Republican Party base, I think he has got a huge support. So I think uh, if you look at the entire, uh, uh, this kind of uh, rulings and verdicts and legal hurdles, so President Trump is the uh, thing he is using it as a political tool as well. Uh, that's quite clear. And, uh, and, uh, and every time, uh, and, uh, and that's why he is uh, fighting it hard and uh, he has a very strong team of lawyers. And those lawyers are going to be uh, appealing this uh, verdict, so whether it's Colorado or May, a verdict uh, to the Supreme Court. And, uh, and uh, this fight is uh, going to be very interesting. Indeed, and you know, as I had in fact presented statistics earlier uh, while in fact asking my very first question, it does seem like Trump is uh, the principal uh, opposition leader in the United States of America. Now, foreign media uh, never loses a chance uh, to berate us in a very condescending manner when it comes to opposition in India, uh, which is, by the way, the largest democracy in the world. Now, to see this happening in the oldest democracy in in the world, yet foreign media remains mum. So, what do you make of that? This is clearly a bias, and uh, if uh, media is uh, if media is honest, then uh, they should uh, criticize the uh, United States of America too. And uh, sorry for my disrupting my voice. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, you know uh, this is a very clear bias, as I said. And uh, you know, at this uh, at this point of time, uh, it is quite uh, clear that. Uh, the, uh, everything is not going uh, in a very proper way in the American democracies too, and it has a lot of uh, weaknesses, a lot of uh, issues which must be criticized. But uh, when it comes to uh, criticism of the United States of America, many of those media channels they only you know uh, target uh, the countries of uh, and democracies of other nations, uh, but uh, not the uh, uh, democracy of the United States of America where mostly they are based, and are, the, are, the, where, uh, are, are they are based in the European capitals. So I think uh, this shows a clear bias, and they try to project themselves as if uh, uh, they are uh, having a higher state of democracy, but which is not very true. In fact, the American democracy and American uh, political legal system uh, has all those weaknesses, what, uh, what any other democracies can have. So I think uh, this kind of practices are a clear bias, and that must not be, uh, that is, that doesn't portray a right picture, and that is why we do not accept uh, such criticism. Uh, whenever such media, uh, uh, any, any portal or any kind of uh, new channel in the United States of America, you can uh, sign this is something against India, we take a very strong view against it, and we counter it, and we try to give them their own, you know, picture. We put, try to put them there before the mirror, the what they exactly are and what they are trying to project. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.